Coming up on DTNS, messaging services want to give you good COVID-19 info. Amazon is straining under that delivery pressure. And what is next for those influencers stuck indoors? This is the Daily Tech News for Monday, March 23rd. In Studio Redwood, I'm Sarah Lane. From North Olmsted, Ohio, I'm Rich Straffolino. From the Los Angeles area, I'm Lamar Wilson. I'm the show's producer, Roger Chang. Before the before we started this DTNS show, we were talking about all sorts of stuff. I got some reading glasses <laughs> because I've decided to just accept my reality. Uh, we were talking about uh, Rich's very expensive glasses, Lamar's <laughs> lack of haircuts, and all sorts Help of other haircut. stuff. <laughs> Help me. <laughs> And that is all part of our expanded show. Good day, Internet. You can get the wider conversation by becoming a member at patreon.com slash DTNS. For now, let's start with a few tech things you should know. Disney Plus will still launch in most of the EU on March 24th, but committed to reducing bandwidth utilization from the service by 25%, similar to what's been done uh, with Netflix and other streaming services in the EU. Disney announced the launch in France is delayed, however, until April 7th. The company also indefinitely suspended the launch of the service in India, originally scheduled for March 29th. Google launched its dedicated COVID-19 information site at google.com slash COVID-19. The site is available in English with a Spanish version on the way and offers state-based information, safety and prevention tips, search trends related to COVID-19 with information from the World Health Organization and the U.S. CDC, as well as links to U.S. states' local health sites. All this information will also be provided in information cards for people searching for COVID-19 related topics. A new report from Strategy Analytics shows that global smartphone shipments in February decreased 38% on the year from 99.2 million units to 61.8 million. This is the largest annual drop in shipments with a report noting that the COVID-19 break in uh, our outbreak in Asia dropping both supply and demand. Quite a drop. As part of the local state government's lockdown order, ride-hailing platforms Uber and Ola suspended all rides in Delhi under Mar uh, until March 31st in India. Uber suspended all shared rides in India last week, and Ola said it's restricting ride options in the country as well, focusing vehicles on healthcare workers and those that support public services. All right, let's talk a little bit more about uh, some apps and services doing some good for information, Rich. Yeah, it seems like mobile messaging is becoming increasingly important in providing information about COVID-19. Uh, to that effect, the World Health Organization launched a chatbot on WhatsApp for COVID-19 related information. Information is updated daily and it launches with English support with Arabic, Chinese, French, Russian and Spanish support arriving in the coming weeks, although no set timetable specifically. Uh, in other news, though, kind of similar, Facebook announced it will provide free service to government health organizations and UN health agencies to use Messenger to scale the responses to the COVID-19 crisis. This can be used uh, for Facebook developers to help automate things like answering uh, commonly asked questions so you're not inundating support workers with those where there's a ready set answer for that and provide a way to set out uh, mass updates of new information. And finally, uh, kind of tangentially to this, Apple updated Siri in the U.S. to provide a CDC-approved conversation flow to answer user questions if they ask Siri, hey, I, or if they tell Siri, I think I have COVID-19 symptoms. I, I started with WhatsApp because I was like, all right, I've got WhatsApp installed. Let's see how good it is. And I was pleasantly surprised. It's a it's a number. The country code is Switzerland, so it took me a minute to find it uh, in the mm -hmm. country code list. But it's a number, and you message it and say hi just to kind of get the conversation started. It's a chat bot. And it was pretty good. I mean, there was a lot of information there. It was organized into categories like, you know, health information, uh, depending on where you are, you know, uh, safety steps that are in place. There was also a, and they're all numbered, you know, so you can say like number five, let's get more information about that. Uh, one of the categories is, uh, you know, debunking conspiracy theories, uh, because there's a lot of misinformation going around. We all know that. And WhatsApp is doing its best, especially because it's WhatsApp. And that's a platform that a lot of people use to spread information uh, saying, listen, you know, if you hear that, <laughs> if you live in a really cold climate, uh, you're not going to get it. Or if you get in a hot tub, then it'll kill it. Or, <laughs> you know, there's if you gargle with a certain kind of, you know, this or that, you you're fine or there's all sorts of, you know, and I hadn't even heard some of these, you know, the, these these misleading claims, but <laughs> uh, suffice it to say there's a lot going on right now. And so I, I thought 
that was pretty good. It does take a couple steps to get to that point though. And don't want to be a pessimist, but I know a lot of people don't go through the process of educating themselves because a lot of social networking is, is getting information somewhat passively from people that you trust, whether or not they should be trusted. Lamar, what, what do you, uh, what's your experience with this? So I, I tested out the uh, Siri uh, when I'm be careful not to say the, the, the word, you know, because <laughs> mine is right here. But um, yeah, so uh, yeah, she asked you, she asked you a question. She said, Hey, are you ready to get started? So you're doing like a survey. And so you, you, you know, he's like, Hey, do you have a fever? Do you have uh, the dry cough? And you say yes or no. I said, no. Um, and I asked if I traveled, you know, was traveling outside the U S said no. And then she just says, well, you're probably not, uh, you know, you probably don't have any problems, but be diligent. Or I forgot what the word was, but you know, just like just watch for your symptoms. I felt it was like pretty helpful. Uh, I didn't I didn't do a scenario where I said yes to anything. So I don't know what she says after that. If she tells you to get to the doctor or she gives you a resource. But it's just nice to kind of have that, you know, because I talk to her all day because I'm lonely. So it's great. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's great that she's that she's there for me if I get sick. So it's yeah, it'll be interesting awesome. to see if there's further integration with any of these, um, you know, as response uh, uh, networks kind of get built out. You know, that Siri thing might be really helpful if it then could, you know, uh, uh, provide like more information about, you know, where to get some telemedicine advice, where to, you know, potentially, you know, obviously you're not going to go to a testing facility directly. You're going to talk to a doctor first, but you know, they're kind of those next step. But good first efforts um, and kind of meeting people where they are. Right? You ha always have your phone on you. You, mm -hmm. you know, you were always using, mm -hmm. you know, WhatsApp and stuff like that. Not letting people go to different lengths and stuff like that. Yeah, I tried out the Siri functionality as well. And the first question was like, do you have a cough? Is your chest tight? Do you have a fever? I said, no. And then the second question was, have you been in contact with somebody who might have been exposed to the virus? And one of the options was not sure, which I'm not. So I said that. But the answer, the conclusion, Siri was like, mm, you're probably low risk. And I thought, mm. Well, I hope so. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, Thanks, like what, per, yeah. what percent of low risk am I exactly? But again, yes, more information is better than none, especially uh, with people who are used to talking to their voice assistants. Absolutely. So uh, let's talk about Amazon. Uh, Amazon announced it will stop shipping non-essential products to customers in Italy and France to allow fulfillment centers to focus on more needed supplies. Amazon considers baby products, health and household items, beauty and personal care, groceries, and industrial, scientific, and pet supplies to be essential. Customers can still order non-essential products from sellers that do not use fulfillment by Amazon. The company had previously announced it would be prioritizing essential items worldwide, and now customers and merchants in the U.S. have seen shipment dates from non-essential items pushed back as far as April 21st. I personally have seen that, uh, with prime orders now seeing a minimum five-day estimate. Amazon confirms that this is not a technical bug, but accurately <laughs> reflects Current estimates. So uh, once again, yeah, I, I was looking for some, you know, I'm set, setting up another part of my office looking for an item I needed. And it was just like, yeah, it was, I think it was April or something. It was just, it was, they didn't, they didn't even like give a clear de delivery date. It was a kind of a delivery window. So it was not fulfilled by Amazon. The shipper is responsible, you know, the, the manufacturer, whoever it is. And, right. and, you know, so they don't know when they'll be able to ship it out. So I, I have yeah. also heard i've i've heard some reports uh, that i have not experienced this myself but reports of people saying well toilet paper is an essential item and my delivery date is well into april so i think that there's some some slipping going on on more popular products regardless i love that amazon had to confirm this isn't a bug we're really <laughs> really backed up yeah, yeah exactly and it looks you know, weird right and i think I don't know. I, I know a lot of people are like, it's the Amazon. They should just, you know, be able to fix this. We know that Amazon is in the process of hiring 100,000 new workers and delivery drivers. Um, don't know exactly where they are in that process, but they've made it clear that they're they're ramping up. In fact, Instacart um, announced something similar just today, right before we started the show, um, to get people the, the goods that they need, that they need delivery people for so that they don't have to go out. At the same time, uh, you know, it's... It, it's sort of hard to say, well, Amazon should have figured out how to deal with something like this because we're in such uncharted waters. We've been talking about this for weeks and it's still so up in the air how this is going to shake out. It sounds like the company is doing the right thing. Essential items for the most part, and that's a little bit of a subjective term because what's essential, yeah, what's essential? may not be to you and vice versa. 
But for the company to say, listen, you know, if somebody's pet is going to go hungry because they can't get food for their pet and they can't get to a pet store. This is an essential item over something like that HDMI cable that Lamar needed at the last minute kind of thing that he would have <laughs> yeah, exactly. gotten on Prime maybe same day. So, yeah, it's 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 a it's a tough one. But I don't think Amazon is immune to delivery strain because this is supply chain stuff like anybody else. Yeah. And, and there's just no way to model for the type of demand and to scale up that there's just no precedent for it. So, I mean, I certainly um, uh, reflecting the, like they said, they're reflecting the reality of the situation. Uh, being at home, though, doesn't mean uh, people aren't trying, though, to help with COVID-19. I know I'm going through lockdown here in Ohio, and I know a lot of other people around the country are kind of in the same boat. Uh, but residents at Mass General are organizing the Covent-19 Moonshot Project, and they're trying to develop either a rapidly deployable mechanical ventilator or a way to modify an existing ventilator to be able to be used on multiple patients at once within the next 90 days. It's interesting, though, that the project is inviting engineers, designers, and technologists to collaborate with medical experts, and the emphasis here really being um, to to kind of cross fields here and brainstorm about ways that you know if, if you're you're just in in medical practice you might not be thinking as an engineer or designer or something like that really bringing that um, uh, that cross uh, methodology uh, to the fore here which I think is really interesting and then on the kind of the computing end of it uh, the distributed computing project folding at home turned its network to COVID nineteen related work and the project has seen a twelve thousand percent increase in contributions in the last two weeks with twelve hundred percent I'm sorry twelve hundred percent still a big still, percentage still huge still huge <laughs> yeah. but yeah, I'm, a, exactly. I'm a zero off, uh, and they've seen 400,000 new members. So just uh, just a giant spike for them. Wow. Uh, th with those new contributions, they're up to 470 petaflops of output uh, to simulate the dynamics of COVID-19 proteins and to hunt for new therapeutic opportunities. And and just for some comparison, there was another uh, news story out today that um, IBM was leading a consortium of national laboratories and the Department of Energy and that kind of stuff, and they were in the 300 petaflop range of all their computing, like 16 supercomputers can. Mind. So just got to give some context for how how much computing power is theoretically at the disposable folding at home. Um, just really cool to see these kind of uh, you know kind of uh, crowdsourced or grassroots um, ways to try and help. Um, and, and we've seen this across the spectrum, not just from a technology basis, but just people you know just eager to reach out just to just to help with um, you know people that are lonely or anything like that across the spectrum. And technology is is proving to be no different in this regard. So, so quick question. I'm, I'm a little familiar with folding at home, not much. I, I know what they do in general, but um, is there a project out there that you'll be able to, you know, contribute your computer that's sitting around that's at, what this at, is. at your house? Oh, that's, yes. that's literally what this is. Okay. Yeah. I didn't. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't know we could contribute. I thought they they were doing their own servers. No, uh, I mean that that attention. is the reason that there's been such an uptick in participation. In fact, we talked about the fact that's that folding it. at home was going to focus on COVID nineteen related work again to try to figure out you know what protein situation can actually really be helpful for doctors, and the more the sure. merrier when it comes to this kind of research. It is very heartwarming to see what. The participation levels has been. I mean, what? Why did they announce that about two weeks ago? I mean, that's 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 a that's a lot yeah, of folks. No, I want to sign up. I want to sign up my computer. Totally. Yeah. yeah same. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. uh and and the three D printing space and and I know when Allison Sheridan was on the show recently and she was like, well, you know, quality control. I mean, that's certainly something that we have to look out for because there are lots of solutions that might seem easy to make and we have some tools that can be uh, contributors to this sort of thing. And she makes a good point. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, cautiously optimistic is a good way to look at this. But yeah, the folding at home stuff is is very cool. So thanks to everybody yeah. who's participating. Strength in numbers. This. Oh. So what a real silver blade in a, in a uh, Twitch chat said, I hope former Bitcoin miners turn their power to COVID-19. That would be great. Yeah. That, Wouldn't, that would, that would yes. Be awesome yeah. 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 Because yeah. some <laughs> server farms used for good. Well, Absolutely. believe it or not, we have some non-COVID-19 news today. <laughs> what? The film, the, I know. I know. I hold on to your butts. The film listing service Movie Phone has been sold yet again, for $1.075 million to Born in Cleveland LLC as part of the Chapter 7 bankruptcy of Helios and Matheson, the parent company of MoviePass. Stay with me here. Started as a phone service for movie information back in 1989, Movie Phone sold to AOL for $388 million. A lot of money back then. It was later sold to Helios and Matheson for $9 million, quite a bit of a drop. After Verizon bought AOL, it's now just shy of $1 million, but it lives. 
Why don't you just tell me what movie you want to see? <laughs> okay. I had to do it. Sorry. It's okay. I, 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 what I think is interesting about this is, I mean, think of like any of the, like the movie information services, like, uh, like, you know, Fandango or, or just any of those that would just drop in valuation. I mean, admittedly, 1999 was a long time ago. Like, I guess for, for the oldies like me, it uh, doesn't seem, but you know, 21 years ago now. Uh, yeah. But to see that, just like just that, it's hockey stick devaluation <laughs> over time. I guess. Uh, I mean, if you don't remember, I mean, back in the, I mean, you remember going to the theaters, like like the first ad you would see, it would be like a Coke ad and then a movie phone ad, uh, yeah, like right really. at the top of the theater. Yeah, just it just totally yeah. bizarre uh, to see this and like the the double poison pill of AOL owning something and then Movie Pass owning something. <laughs> it's like yeah. the guarantee. I, I, I always thought something like this would. would I would hopefully be able to to um, not not assimilate, but 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 to, to change over time. Like movie phone becomes, you know, a, a, an online thing, and 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 they didn't, yeah, they didn't seem to 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 keep. It's kind of sad to see from three hundred eighty-eight million to one million. That's that's a that's a huge drop. So well, yeah, you kinda, think you think ni- in nineteen ninety-nine that was still worth three hundred eighty-eight million, but it just that's goes to show you how money. many people were still dependent on phone services that you would never <laughs> use anymore back then because it was the early days, early days of the internet. Um, now, I may mess up this name, and I apologize in advance. So it's just saying it now. Um, but a new note from Apple analyst Ming-Chi Kuo. That's oh, right. Hey, that? Beautiful can read. work. Okay. Thank you. Predicts that a new high-end 6.7-inch iPhone scheduled for 2020 uh, will feature a sensor shift image stabilization on the rear camera with the technology expanding to multiple models in 2021, with the periscope telephoto lens predicted for 2022. Hmm. Meanwhile, an early iOS 14 build obtained by 95 Mac shows Apple is building up the Find My App, or the Find My App, sorry, I said the wrong, was debuted, uh, debuted in uh, iOS 13 as a combination of Find My Phone and Find My Friends. In iOS 14, this would include the ability to be notified when someone uh, doesn't arrive at a specific location by a certain time, as well as when a contact leaves a location before a set time. Find My also includes AR kit support in iOS 14, letting users visually obtain location information in AR. Um, this is, again, this is all speculation, um, and there was a little leak there, but uh, I don't know, does it feel like it's too early to talk about phone iPhones or not? I mean, it's I not too early to talk like about phone updates <laughs> this year i'm ready ming chi well, kuo has a very good track record so yes although yeah, this is not yeah, anything that apple has announced these are you know these are these are solid rumors plus rumors pro but uh yeah <laughs> i mean i also i skipped the 2019 iphone uh bump i i'm still rocking the 2018 model um and it's kind of falling apart so i'm i'm gonna oh, limp along so. to this fall assuming that there are new phones uh that happen in the fall I'm excited about a 6.7 inch iPhone. First of all, huge uh, with the best image uh, possible. Sensor shift image stabilization on the rear camera. As I understand it, this would help um, uh, uh, ultra wide photos have the image stabilization that that non ultra wide photos already enjoy on the newer iPhones, which is Mm -hmm. great. You know, some people don't really take advantage of their cameras, but that is one of the selling points of the iPhone and anything that's, you know, any other top end models that's in that category. So uh, that's really the only camera I use now. So that's great. And yeah, yeah, Periscope telephoto lens, that's 2022, but hey, it's right around the corner. I'm more excited about the Find My app, which I, I really think that Find My iPhone and Find My Friends going together was the right call. It makes a lot more sense. Yeah. 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 And yeah. And this this feels like a service play, I mean, for, for Apple to build out that Find My and to make it from something like, oh, I lost, like, Find My Phone was like, someone stole my phone, I lost my phone. And this, to me, seems more like something, you know, to get you just more in the habit of using it every day, to integrate it with your calendar, and, you know, not just for dropping your kids off at school, but it's like, oh, okay, if I'm late leaving the store, or if I, you know, if I leave early to change plans or something like that, I mean, yeah, you could say it's a little bit of, like, a nanny, you know, situation, but... I, I do think they're they're building out some interesting use cases beyond just oh I lost this or drop a pin and find me later or something like that. 
I used to use Find My of, Friends I, quite a bit, and uh, we've just all all of our activity has dwindled. <laughs> I think I've like two people <laughs> on Find My Friends, yeah, and I never care where they are, and I never look. But I do use the temporary. You know, if I'm in LA and I'm supposed to meet Lamar somewhere, and I'm not totally sure how long traffic is going to be, and it might be mm -hmm. a little bit weird. You know, I'll be like, for the next hour, you can kind of see where I am. Um, and be, uh, being able to get a ping from the Find My app, which I assume is mm -hmm. how you'd get notifications if for some reason I was running late or something weird happened uh, without you having to check you know my map that's ju that's just that's just convenience um i'm wondering uh, if um wise will be using this to oh my, my husband is late where is he <laughs> and well, I, so I, I won't say what he's doing i'm just saying there might be some concerns there that that you know be careful husbands don't don't do bad things <laughs> hey, hey folks if you want to get all the tech news in about five minutes Check out dailytechheadlines.com. Okie dokie. We heard today, not a big surprise, but it is today's news. A VidCon has oh. announced it's canceled its annual show, which was scheduled for June 17th through 20th in Anaheim, California. It's where they've been doing the shows for the last few years. The company said it's looking to make the conference happen sometime in the fall, but for now, tickets will be refunded. The team says it's also looking into virtual formats and remote speaker options. Seems to be the trend, although, you know, there's Google I.O., for example, was like, you know, we're not doing anything. We're just going to regroup and, and do this the right way later. Lamar, mm -hmm. I know that you, I mean, yes. you, you didn't go to VidCon last year, did you? I didn't. I was around VidCon. Yeah. I, I, I was, my aura and my presence was there. But I was. <laughs> you. Yeah. you were close enough. It is a, it, it's a, it, this is a big event. Uh, it's a big event for, for, for content creators. Um, and I know a lot of folks are disappointed. It's good that they're refunding uh, the tickets, but this is just, a bigger conversation that I'm so glad you're with us, Lamar, actually, because I know you have a lot of thoughts about this. The idea that people who make their living as influencers, whether or not you like that word, you know what I mean. I love that word. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, if you're if you if you are, you know, making your your living, your livelihood, reviewing products, um, you know, you know, comedy stuff, you know, anything that, you know, the YouTube stars would be a part of, the Instagram influencers, uh, you know, everybody is affected. Uh, and we've oh, talked yeah. a lot on the show about the industries that well, some industries are seeing a bump in 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 requests, of course, but many industries are, are have been really shaken up. And uh, for example, there was a Verge article about online content creators you know, quarantined at home. And you think, all right, well, you know, your Instagram model, you know, you take like a pretty photo of yourself. Now you're just in a building rather than on a street. And it's in some cases, in, in some cases, <laughs> I know, I know, it's so hard to be an Instagram yeah. model. I know you all feel my pain. In some cases, you can kind of roll your eyes, but at the same time, you have to think, okay, well, if somebody has a contract with a company, you know, you wear their clothes or you talk about how, you know, they have good vitamins or whatever it is. You know, if you're under contract to do something that's required to be outside or, or in front of a landmark or something, it's possible that you're not going to get paid. And if you have budgeted out stuff for yourself for the next mm -hmm. quarter uh, and beyond, that can hurt. It hurts the way that anybody is hurt that expects to get money rolling in and no longer has it. Lamar, how has this affected you? Because you are very prolific as far as 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 your video content goes and and has it changed the way that you do things yeah it's been it, it it's been a challenge uh you know fortunately i did have a, a little back backlog of you know my last two videos have been things i've done in the past but um, i'll give you one example um uh, I'm working on a on a video with uh, the Samsung. It's not paid or anything, but they you know they they sent me a TV to check out. And this was before everything went down. So like you know, and and now that it's here, you know, I called them again and I was like, wow, uh, this TV is great. Uh, I, I really want to talk about it, but you know, how 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 do I come off talking about this thing without seeming like, you know, there's like you know you know there's people out here losing their jobs, and I was like, hey. Look, check out this six thousand, seven thousand dollar TV I got right, over here. You know, right. yeah, let's yeah. buy it. Just put it on credit. You know, so you know it. it and I have figured out a way to navigate around that, thankfully, because you know I'm able to do some com comedic things to kind of lighten it. But it's it's a challenge. I had I had someone ask me uh, about a taste test, and not that there's anything wrong with doing a taste test, but it made me immediately question. Wow, you know, is this the right time to be, you know, frivolously playing around, playing out with cereal or stuff like that when mm -hmm. people can't get groceries? That's just that's in my head. 
So I am I'm just I'm being a little bit more cautious uh, about how to navigate this. And, and you know, I came up with some tips uh, of my own of how to uh, maybe a rubric or so how to come up with this. And uh, what I found out, I talked to my audience that by and large, the audience is, is just as stressed as, as we are. They're they're going through a lot of things. They're scared or whatever. They they really want us to continue to do what we do, and, you know, and, and they want they need entertainment. Um, and they just want us to, you know, they want us to be aware, you know, obviously, you know, that things are happening and be respectful of it. But by and large, they just want us to continue to to, to entertain and, and be respectful. And so uh, what I've been trying to do, and I encourage other, you know, influencers and air quotes there, um, just to think for a few, few minutes before you hit post, like type out what you're going to type or have that picture ready. But really think, if, is, is it the, is it, you know, what would be the response, you know, if you were receiving that and you were struggling? What would be the response, you know, and, and adjust accordingly, I, I think. And um, I, I don't I know this one is tricky. The the the, the what everybody kind of under quarantine, you know, I've seen some creators who are posting group group collabs and, and you know, they're all on the couch or they're doing these skits and things. And maybe that stuff was made in the past. I posted one today. Uh, of, of me and a friend who was that was made a month ago, but I did put a disclaimer at the beginning of the video. So mm -hmm. maybe that's something like that. It's like, hey, this was made before, you know, we, I just finished it, you know, or maybe just don't post it or, you know, especially if you're doing it in real time. Like if you're actually out there gathering, I mean, these people are looking to you as a role model, whether you like it or not. Uh, so uh, maybe not do that because you're then telling them that it's okay for them to do. And then it, that causes a chain reaction that none of us want. Absolutely. I, I think yeah. it's, I've definitely seen, don't mm. have to call them out. Don't have to dox the celebs, oh, I but I've definitely names. seen some, some <laughs> stuff online where I'm like, okay, I get it. You're stuck at home like the rest of us, but you're in a mansion. <laughs> there's, there are certain yeah, things where you're kind of like it, it, I don't think that, you know, your message is in poor taste. I, I, you're trying, right. You're trying to use the, 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 the media that you have at your disposal to connect to people in new ways. And I can't hate anybody for that. That said, there are some tone deaf things I've seen recently where I'm like, you should have chosen Lamar's tip number two. Just think on it for a few minutes. Just just a few minutes. Don't have your kid on a hoverboard, you know, flying around the backyard. I won't say who it was. We probably think of the same person. Mm. But it's just like it, it just sent, yeah, it just sends a weird message. It, it's it's really it's really awkward. I don't know. Yeah, there's a definitely a line to walk between, like you said, not wanting to be insensitive and be and, you know, kind of like posting something frivolous that that people would say, well, you know, we're, we're you know worried about our health and safety right now. You know, we don't need expensive technology. But then at the same time, you kind of you, know, you have an audience that loves what you do already and you want to yes. provide that service. So, so the, yeah. and, and real quickly, I, I one thing I, I, I looked at others who are kind of doing it very responsibly, a lot of the tech channels on YouTube. They're, I mean, they're still talking about the new Mac, the MacBook. You all talked about it uh, that, that came out, uh, the the uh, the, uh, the iPad, and so you could you the world doesn't stop, right? You still, I still will talk about this TV. There's, there's, actually, TV sales have gone up since since this this quarantine. So people kind of do want to know about it. It's just my how I do it, you know, and making sure I don't come off, uh, you know, bragging or or a hey, look at me and and you know as long as long as I do that, I think. I'll be in a good position. Yeah, maybe I I'll almost bought an exercise bike yesterday. <laughs> I almost bought one too. Not like, a Peloton. I was looking... It was something less expensive, but I'm like, I should just do it. And then I was like, Sarah, <laughs> <laughs> walk around the block and think about this. And I was like, that's twelve hundred dollars. What are you doing? No. I was looking at happening. a Nautilus, and I was like, oh. But yeah, same thing. It was like, why am I spending a thousand dollars right now? <laughs> uh, if you uh, if you've bought something because you're stuck at home that uh, has improved your life, we would like to know about it. In fact, you could join the conversation in our Discord and let everybody know. You can join by linking to a Patreon account at Patreon.com/slash DTNS. In Let's the check mailbag. Out what's in the mailbag. Yeah, yes, that's uh, in the mailbag. Michael, he he actually touched on something that we often talk about internally here on the show, and it's sort of like, do we have? Uh, you know, words that we, we'd always like to replace with other words, or if there's a sentence that's kind of a run on sentence, how do we condense it? So there, there is a, we, we have a flow here. And Michael says, I know pretty much everybody has given up on saying iPhone 10 in favor of iPhone X. Michael, I s still say iPhone 10, but I know what you mean. Michael says, it's been a surprise though, how often I've started to hear X instead of times. The other place I often hear it is with dimensions. If some something is 15 by 12 centimeters, see, I'm already, say, I'm already uh, saying by instead of X, 15 X12 CM, 
Michael says, used to be said 15 by 12 centimeters, but I often hear 15 X 12 cm. Michael says, I realize realize these are common forms of writing, but to have them said that way has gotten to be jarring, but also common. And sometimes I have to write down what's being said so that I can see it and understand. You know, he, Michael's email was a little bit longer. He also had another example where it's like something, let's say we're talking about the, the new iPhones and the camera capabilities. And it's like five X zoom over previous model, something like that. I'm just, I'm just making up a term. If you said five times Zoom, that's technically correct, but it sounds a little bit weird. And so I think that there are situations where we know that you know what 5X means, even though it is a little clunky. I'm not sure I'm, I'm not sure if anybody uh, feels that one or the other is grading, but I feel your pain, Michael, because there are certain, in fact, there are certain words that are banned on DTNS for a variety of reasons, because we've all just come to the conclusion that we could say it a different way. So uh, this is not one of those terms, though. And <laughs> to think about, you know, what our standard is. If I hear someone now say CM out loud, I'm just like, what? Oh, God, what yeah. That? What well, that's that? like CMS to me. CM yeah, is, yeah. Is I'm just like, like I wouldn't even think a unit of measurement. Yeah, that's it's. Yeah. Uh, Uh, But thanks for the email, Michael. And thank you. A special shout out to our patrons at the master and grandmaster levels, including Philip Less, Frederick Hubner, and James Callison. Thank you so much for your continued support of the show. Absolutely. Also, thanks to Lamar Wilson. I missed you, Lamar. I feel like it's been six months, even though it's only been one. Uh, But uh, Uh, thank you. it's It's been an interesting month. How have you been keeping busy? This month has been crazy. Yeah, I I, I have been doing a lot, uh, you know, d- different background and things. And uh, but yeah, I'm trying to keep busy on on YouTube where I talk about gaming, tech, and pop culture stuff. So now they, I talk to my audience. Y'all about to get sick of me because I'm gonna be on <laughs> I'm gonna be on almost every day now. So uh, get get ready for it. But you can find me on YouTube. Uh, just type in Lamar Wilson with two R's, and yeah, and you'll find me. even with one R it should pop up. Yeah to make a mistake it's okay (laughs) very good uh also thank you so much to our patrons we know that this is an uncertain time for a lot of you if you can afford to keep supporting us directly please do we appreciate it so much some of you have recently bumped up contributions to cover those who need it right now Thank you so much for that. Uh, Again, strength in numbers. Direct support is the best way to keep us independent and support the livelihoods of the whole DTNS team. We are so, so grateful for all of you. Um, You you help us make the show fun, and we love doing it. If you find yourself in a situation where you do need to cut some costs, we completely understand. We have other ways you can support the show, other folks here on our Patreon who can pick you up in the meantime, and you can always promote the show to others. It's a great way to support us and get the word out. Out. Reminder, you can support the show at any level at dailytechnewsshow.com slash Patreon. Rich? Oh, yes. Our, yeah, our email address, <laughs> if you want to reach out, is feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. We're live, of course, Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time, 20 UTC. Find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. Tom is back tomorrow along with Patrick Beja. Talk to you then. Bye. Bye part of the frog pants network frog pants network get more shows like this at frogpants.com diamond club hopes you have enjoyed this program <laughs>